Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we've got part two looking at pulse width modulation um, it's definitely worth watching part one if you've not already done that I'll put a link up top so you can do that um, so let's look at um, a couple of methods that we can generate um, PWM both involve microcontrollers one's very DIY one's uh, a lot more straightforward so let's start with them um, first of all with Arduino Okay, so the first method uh, I'm going to look at for generating PWM with microcontroller is to use an Arduino. In this case I'm going to use my Ard one of my Arduino Unos. Um, and there's so much information out there about the Arduino. Um, if you're intrigued by it, um, have a look. If you're already an expert, don't look too closely at my code. I'm certainly not an Arduino expert. I'm a bit of a, a reluctant Arduino user, I do recognise that they are very useful pieces of kit. So we're all good to go with this Uno because PWM is available on pins 5 and 6 at 980 Hz and it's available on 3, 9, 10 and 11 at 490 Hz. That's to do with um, uh, the prescaler uh, scaling down one of the clock values. So those are easily available. So how do we go about this? Well again that's incredibly simple. Um, first of all we need a little program that will allow us to do it. So this is uh, the Arduino sketch that I'm using. Um, I'll quickly talk you through it. This is not meant to be um, a video about Arduino programming. Thank goodness because I'm not very good at it. But I've set uh, in line 1 I'm initialising pin 5 to be the PWM pin. So I'm telling the microcontroller uh, use pin 5 for output. And then when we go into the setup loop on line 3, so I'm telling it in line 5 to make the um, PWM pin, which is pin 5, then output. And then we go into the loop, and the loop bit is the actual program that repeatedly runs, and I'm telling it to write to the analog um, pin, PWM pin, pin 5, the value of 127. Um, now when I do that, um, what we can then do is attach an oscilloscope to the Arduino, so we'll simply attach it to uh, pin 5 and pick up a ground. I've picked it up um, across there on the top left, but you can pick it up anywhere there's a ground. And what we should then see on the display is, not surprisingly, um, at round about 980 hertz, uh, a 50% duty cycle PWM waveform. So by um, altering the value of the uh, the value that we write to the to the pin, um, we can alter the duty cycle. So zero would give you zero percent. One two seven is giving you fifty percent. Two five five is giving you a hundred percent, and that's because um, the pin expects uh, a number between zero and two five five. In other words, it's represented by uh, eight bits in binary. Okay, so if we then put a smaller number in, uh, we'd get a smaller duty cycle, as you can see there. Put a larger number in, you'd get a larger duty cycle, and hopefully that um, makes some sense. So let's hop across to the bench and just uh, have a look at some uh, real live examples of that in action. Okay, here we've got Arduino attached. Um, pin 5 on the ground taken to the scope here. Currently it's powered down. I'm going to power it off a, just off a USB power supply. So I'll just plug that in and we should instantly get 50% um, PWM. And there you go. That's the Arduino powered up. Um, and there's the value of 127 displayed um, as 50% PWM. And I'm just going to just alter the value of that and uh, I'll just come back when I've done that. I can't get the computer near enough to the uh, bench here to uh, actually program it uh, directly so I'll be back in a moment. Okay here we are back as you can see by the slight movement of the position of things and I've now uploaded a value of 56 into the analog write variable and I've uploaded that sketch onto the controller and you can see we've now got a much shorter duty cycle time. So there you go, PWM generated incredibly easily using an Arduino. Okay, so having looked at uh, 
a fairly simplistic way of generating PWM. Um, let's now make that variable and again that's incredibly easy with uh, the Arduino. On the bottom right there of the board you can see there's uh, six analog inputs. So I'm going to connect a potentiometer to analog input one, the wiper on input one. I'm going to pick up uh, ground and five volts from the other two pins as you can see there and then what we'll do is get the Arduino to read um, the value of that uh, pot, uh, convert that to a suitable PWM uh, number and output it as before on pin 5. So let's look at the uh, program that will do that. So in lines 1, 2 and 3 I'm defining the uh, variables so I'm going to call on line 1 uh, initialize a variable called pot that's going to hold the value read from the potentiometer uh, on line 2 duty or DCYC is going to be the calculated duty cycle number and again as previously output pin PWM is pin 5 so then we're setting in line 6 and 7 in the setup we're setting PWM pin to output as we did before and the additional line this time is we're setting analog input 1 to be input and then we're into the program itself and that's fairly straightforward too so on line 11 we read the value of the pot and that's stored in a variable pot on line 12 we calculate the duty cycle and to do that we need to um, divide the value of pot by 4 uh, that's because uh, it's actually a 10-bit number that is uh, sampled in the analog port and we need to convert it to an 8-bit number now I am aware that I could have used um, a function to do this it's possible to use the map function but uh, just for now to make it even more simplistic I'm going to divide that number by 4 which is going to give me something which approximates to between 0 and 255 and then store that value in DCYC and then as before I'm writing the output to the pin but at this time I'm writing the variable DCYC which will be calculated depending on the position of the wiper on the pot. OK, hope that makes sense. Let's go and have a look at that on the bench. OK, here we are back again uh, with the sketch that we just looked at uploaded to the machine. The sketch is actually running, so we've got exactly the same output as before going to the scope, and we've got um, 0 and 5 volts either side of the potentiometer track and then the green wire goes to analog input 1 so there appears to be nothing going on there and that's because the potentiometer is at its lowest value so if we now um, turn that up you can see we start to get the duty cycle increasing and I can continue right up until eventually we'll actually get 100% um, the scope just loses trigger towards the end but uh, you get the idea so there we are, that's, uh, apologies, a bit of a dodgy connection there, that's uh, variable PWM using the Arduino and you can see it's, uh, it's very responsive, does it rather well indeed. Another very straightforward way to produce PWM is to uh, use some kind of module um, ready built. This is the IC station one. Now I did a video about this um, about 18 months ago um, but I do think it's worth uh, just recapping this as it's potentially useful. So it's a smallish um, uh, unit uh, that uh, takes its power from a DC supply and produces PWM. On the front of the board is a display and some push buttons and on the rear of the board the large chip is the display driver, the smaller chip to the right of it is an ARM CPU that uh, presumably does all the heavy lifting, listens to the buttons and produces PWM etc. Um, and it's quite a, a neat little module if you just want to be able to um, uh, have the ability to produce PWM from time to time. And I was going to uh, uh, film another um, section about this however the one of the sections from the original video which I will put a link up top to um, is actually um, perfectly acceptable and it's essentially covering what I was going to cover so I'm going to um, include that link now from 
about 18 months ago and as I said I will link the video up top. So let's now look at the IC station PWM module. Here's the PWM module then. Um, it's in a grey plastic enclosure. It's one of those which will fit into a, a square opening in, a, in a, a box of some kind and there's a couple of uh, snap clips on the side that will uh, uh, retain it. Uh, it's got a plastic back on so in reality it's actually quite okay to use it like this on the bench. On the back there's four screw terminals, uh, voltage plus and minus, uh, ground and the PWM out. So I've got the bench power supply attached to producing 10 volts so as you can see that will come straight on and I've got a slightly dodgy connection there onto the scope probe um, but we've got uh, 50 Hertz at 50% and I've got the scope here giving me the measurements as well that agrees there uh, 10 volt peak to peak duty cycle 50% so first thing to note about the device is that the output amplitude uh, essentially is based on the the input voltage which according to the data sheet and I will put a link to that in the description uh, according to the data sheet that works from 3.3 volts up to 30 volts so I've just got it on the bench power supply here so if I uh, drop the bench power supply just quickly down to 5 volts uh, which is there you can see the amplitude is reduced um, everything else remains unchanged and I'll go down to 3.5 volts there which is there and again still working fine um, you start to see the backlight dim as you approach 3.3 volts now to be fair the display is hard to see um, on here I'm going to go back up to just up to 10 volts somewhere uh, hopefully that's approximately 10 volts uh, it's quite hard to see here uh, in, in truth it's much easier to see uh, with the, the eye, it's the camera there is giving you a false impression of, our, of the, the lack of contrast. That isn't true, it's actually it is easy to see. So it's really straightforward. If we press the frequency button, uh, it will go up, and if we hold the frequency button, it very quickly speeds up. So I'm going to go up to um, go up to around 500 hertz there, something like that that's 545 not that that matters terribly let's just alter the time base a little there we go uh, and if I continue to hold that button it will very quickly when it approaches a uh, thousand Hertz it will start reading 1.6 kilohertz and it starts stepping up in um, 100 Hertz divisions then and according to the uh, data sheet um, the frequency range is 1 to 150 kilohertz so I'm just going to keep my finger on there for you just to show you how relatively easy it is to change so that should be 7.25 kilohertz let's alter the time base uh, yep that's saying 7.13 whoops I've got a poor connection there on the probe apologies for that uh, I'd say in about 7.13 kilohertz, actually 7.25, so it's within its um, plus or minus 2%. And duty cycle, um, saying 49% there, saying 50 on here. So duty cycle then, um, exactly the same principle. You move that down, and you can see it will go right down there to the point where the, the scope uh, can no longer trigger from it at zero. That's effectively off, um, and it needs to be at about two percent is before the scope is able to get a trigger from it and again if we wind the duty cycle up to 100 percent there we've effectively got DC output I'm saying uh, got the scope um, in DC coupling so you, you were seeing 10 volts there so that's how you change frequency and duty cycle and I think for if you want to use this as a, a supply to um, check out a motor or a project you're building that would be really good for that work very well indeed if you want to do uh, a little bit finer control that's also possible okay I'm going to leave that uh, previous video clip there um, there was uh, nothing relevant to uh, what we've been talking about in this video beyond that point uh, I will put a link to that video up top um, if you want to watch it 
about that little module I'll also put links in the description um, to how you can uh, get hold of one of those. Now I did intimate in the um, conclusion of part one that, that there'd obviously be a part two and potentially a part three. Uh, there definitely is going to be a part three because I want to look at a problem that a friend of mine had uh, when he was trying to generate a PWM for an application that involved uh, a fairly high current going through MOSFETs. So that video is to come, so you can look out for that one. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching. Hope it's made some sense. Look forward to seeing you on the next video.